beings from a clot of blood. This is one of the miracles we talked about the Quran, that that's how we start out. Then it continues, it says, recite, and your Lord is so generous, who has taught man how to use a pen. Taught man what he didn't know. So we find immediately a, a lot of uh, is small words, but a lot of meaning here, a lot of understanding. And he, when he went back to his people to tell them about this, his wife accepted it right away. His best friend that he grew up with accepted this right away. And one of his cousins, a young boy about nine years old named Ali, very famous today, accepted Islam. These were the first people. But then the others weren't so quick to accept. In fact, he found a lot of resistance and they began attacking him and saying bad things. He's a magician, he's a lawyer, he's this and that. But they knew he wasn't a liar, they knew he wasn't a magician, and they knew that he was telling uh, the, at least what he believed because uh, he wasn't coming up with something that was uh, typical. For, for a madman, a crazy person, or a magician, he was saying what he really believed. There's one God, only one God, and I'm his messenger to you. So this rejection went on for quite a while. In the beginning, they tried to negotiate things with him. They offered him, you know, we'll give you a good position. We'll let you be like the king of the tribe. We'll give you women. Do you want, what do you want, money? We'll give you money. You want power? What do you want? He said, I don't want any of those things. There was he no said, motive. Well, his own uncle came to him and he said, his uncle's trying to defend him and take care of him. And he said, look, I can only go so far. These people are getting wild. Your own relatives want to wipe you out because you're challenging their false gods. They don't like it. So why don't you like settle down a little bit? He said, and they're offering this, they're offering that. He said, well, look, I swear by God, if they put the moon in my right hand, and the sun in my left, meaning if they give me everything there is, the, the expression they had, he said, I would never give up worshiping God as one. I would never give up spreading this message. It means no matter what they offer, no matter what they say, I can't accept it because I'm not here about material things. I want to tell people there's one God, worship Him. That was the main message that he brought. Still the same message today. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with Yusuf Estes getting to know the last and final message of mankind, the Prophet Muhammad. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Dean Show. Today on the Dean Show, we have our special guest, Yusuf Estes, and we are talking about the last and final messenger that has been sent to the whole of mankind mm -hmm. as a mercy to the world. So we're getting Muhammad to Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Ibn Abdul Muttalib. We're not talking about a man who lived 100 years ago. Nope, not 50 years ago. We're not talking about Elijah Muhammad. We're not talking about Muhammad Ali. We're talking about Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the son of Abdul Muttalib, who lived in the Arabian Desert, who was born in the year 570 A.D., died in the year 633 A.D. He's That's a seal of the prophets. He's called the Khatam and Anbiya, seal of the prophets. What does that mean? There's no more prophets coming after him? Seal, when you seal up something, that's it. That's the end of it. That's None. what it says in the Quran. Okay, continue on. We talked about his credibility. Okay. Right? He never told a lie, and he was very truthful. There was the more to it than that. The credibility, his honesty, integrity, this is one subject. Look at how, when we talk about him being a mercy to mankind, look at his soft and gentle way to treat people. So soft and so gentle, and yet sometimes even humorous. I recall that one time there was an a elderly woman who was talking about, you know, what is the paradise going to be like? And because she'd heard him speaking about these things, you know, and he said, oh, you didn't know? There's not going to be any old ladies there. What? Oh, and he went off and when he came back, he found her crying. He said, what's the matter? She said, you said there weren't going to be any old ladies there. He said, well, that's because you're going to be young and beautiful again. Oh, so even he had humor with the way he explained things to people. Another thing that happened, another woman one time, an elderly woman, had a big package and she was trying to find somebody to carry it for her. She thought that he was so simple in his lifestyle and all, he looked for all the world just like a, a servant boy running around there. And she said, you know, uh, come carry this package. So he did. He carried it just like he was a porter. And he carried it and carried it, went out in the desert, whatever her house was, he carried it out and put it down. She said, I can't pay you. He said, it's okay, I don't need anything. She said, no, but I'm going to give you a good tip. She said, I heard that in the city there's this man calling to a religion about one God, and his name is Muhammad, and beware of him. 
He said, ma'am, I am Muhammad. <laughs> and she said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Muhammad rasulullah. What does that mean? It means I accept that there's only one God and that Muhammad is his messenger. And she entered Islam? Well, as far as I know. That's what it means when you say that. What it means. But because of his character and his action that went with it, that was important, you know. He was soft, he was gentle. At, at the same time, there were points where he was going to be tough. Uh, even on his own uh, followers, look what he did. One time they were in uh, a hardship, a hardship. They were being beaten down. They were being abused and insulted and, and uh, tortured right in front of the holy sanctuary, right in front of the Kaaba, which is there in Mecca. And one of his companions said to him, you know, I wish you would pray and ask Allah, because they know his prayers will be answered. Just ask Allah, give us a victory. Let us, let us at least fight back against these guys. Give us, you know. And he said, look at this. He's telling me to be patient. He's saying, you don't think about this, but the people before you suffered more than you. And here's the a condition he's going to describe now to him about the early Christians, what they went through. He said they were tortured in such a way that they would rake their skin off with steel combs. They would take these iron combs and just rake their skin and just kill them with that. And that they would uh, throw them to the animals and burn them alive and boil them and even put a saw in their head and cut them in half. These things he mentioned to that man to let him understand. You want to understand what it is to believe in the one God and really follow this message. People have suffered much worse than us. So we have to be patient. And they were patient. They were patient 13 years of the worst kind of abuse, being turned even out in the desert for a long period of time, and they were left to die. They migrated up to Medina, and the people tried to waylay them along the way just to kill them, just to get rid of them, because they believe in one God. And when they were in Medina, in this condition is where the verses come that tell them, now they could go back and fight these guys and even kill them if they're killing you, but you must stop if they stop. That's to clarify the way that people mistranslate or misrepresent what's coming in the Quran. It was definitely that you could be able to fight now, but with these limits. But look at this. The character of, the, of Muhammad was so sweet and so gentle that when his wife talks about him, now you can imagine that here he is, an important man in these days. Now we're going to be talking later in his life, and he's got so many responsibilities, so many things to do. And then she sees some um, men out in there throwing spears and in a contest and so on. And she says, uh, I want to watch that. Well, in order for her to watch, because his wife needs to be sheltered from the people, and she has to stand behind him. Well, she likes this idea. So she's standing behind him, looking over his shoulder and watching them in the doorway of their home. And she had him stand there and stand there and stand there and stand there. She said she didn't even want to watch him or she just wanted to see how long she could keep him standing there. <laughs> but he didn't mind. And he used to run and play with her. And she said, we used to race together, you know, and I used to beat him when I was younger. But when I got older, I got fat and then he could beat me. These were some of the personal things that we know about him and his character, his, his kindness, sweetness, gentleness, and yet at the same time, firm on this one point. There's really only one God. There's no compromise on that. Can you tell us what could have driven a man to go through all this torture and all this persecution? What was his motive behind this? Well, that's a very good question. It's an intelligent question. The motivation behind people, all people, is always the same thing. There's no difference between you and I and Prophet Muhammad or Jesus or Abraham or even Adam, our father Adam. All of us, peace be upon them, all of us we have two motivators. And you can check this out with psychiatrists, they'll tell you the same thing. Recruiters in the military, salesmen, will all tell you the same thing. The two motivators for a human being is simple. First is the motivation for what? Protecting yourself from a loss. Nobody wants to lose. The fear of a loss is a motivator. And the hope of a reward or a gain, this is another motivator that all of us have. We're, we want to gain, but at the same time, we don't want to lose. This is key, because if I'm thinking that I could lose, I would rather take, uh, hold on to that than take a chance on a gain. And people do this, logical people anyway, in the stock markets, investments and things, they, you'll see that same thing worked out in real life. But especially here when a person 
has had a chance to actually get close to the paradise, which he did.